Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the last concert of the season of Bulgarian Concert Evenings in New York. It's wonderful to see so many people here, and I hope you will enjoy this event, uh, which will feature Anna Stojeva, pianist and co-chair of Bulgarian Concert Evenings, and her friends, uh, two musicians from the Metropolitan Opera Orchestra. And they will perform um, works for woodwinds and piano, two trios and two sonatas. Our next season is already in the works. We're going to open up um, the season in October at Bois Recital Hall with a gala, which will uh, focus on works, chamber works with flute. And we'll have two wonderful flutists invited. So follow us uh, on the internet uh, for more news as we continue to plan our next season. Thank you so much and enjoy the concert.
so much for being here on this um, steamy early summer evening. Um, so the work we just played for you, the, the Fulight Trio for Obobasun and Piano, has been sort of a staple for the double reed repertoire, essentially since it was first composed. This next work that, that we're going to play for you, Jeff Scott's Elegy for Innocence, is sort of a comparatively more recent uh, addition to the really standard uh, bassoon rep. Now, Jeff Scott is a hornist. That's how he primarily makes his, his living. For many years, he was the hornist with the world famous quintet, the Imani Winds. He teaches horn at, at Oberlin College. And in his spare time, he composes what I find to be really, really compelling works. Um, and, and these are pieces where you can hear not only the influences of sort of the standard, you know, common Western symphonic tradition, but also African influences. Jeff himself is, is a black man. African influence, there are jazz harmonies that you'll hear quite early on in this, in this piece. And this, this particular piece, the Elegy for Innocence, he wrote for his colleague in the Imani Winds, Monica Ellis, the, the bassoonist in the group. And he essentially wrote this, as the title would suggest, as sort of a loss of innocence. It, it, it came from him re-examining his life and how sort of his expectations of, of how his life would go matched up with the reality. Now that sounds really heavy, I promise that the piece is not that, is not that <laughs> heavy. Um, but I do find it to be just an absolutely gorgeous piece of music and a really, really worthy addition uh, to the standard bassoon repertoire. Thank you. <laughs>
on the program to the oldest. The Saint-Saëns Sonata was written in 1921, I believe, and this was at the age of 85 for Saint-Saëns. And as we know, um, you know, wisdom comes with age, and this was, uh, finally he got around to writing for the oboe. He should have done it much earlier. Uh, but, you know, luckily we at least have this one gem. He um, was... You know, part of a time when in Paris, for instance, the, the woodwind repertoire and sort of the momentum that was going on with these instruments was quite severe, actually. There was a lot of uh, woodwind makers located in Paris right around the turn of the century, the early, early 20th century, and they were, they were making the instruments much better. So there are a lot more capabilities of dynamics and colors and how fast you could play because of the key work. And um, the composers noticed. And so we actually have a lot of repertoire from this time period, which is so great for us. Uh, like the Poulenc uh, trio that we heard, that was 1926, also from that time period. Um, anyway, so we're, we're very lucky to have this. This is one of our staples in the oval repertoire. And um, a little fun side note, it starts out with uh, a couple bars that are quoting the um, Westminster chimes, so that might be familiar to you.
for something completely different. Um, Andre Previn was one of the 20th century's really, truly great musical polymaths. He was a pianist, he was a conductor, he was a composer. Uh, he composed in jazz, in classical, in Hollywood um, sort of styles. Uh, he was music director, a chief conductor of six different orchestras over the course of his career, which were L.A. Phil. Pittsburgh Symphony, Houston Symphony, London Symphony Orchestra, Royal Philharmonic, and Oslo. And Oslo Philharmonic. <laughs> Round of applause for Nathan. <laughs> On top of all this, he had time for five wives and ten children. <laughs> A really, really busy guy. <laughs> now, when it, when it comes to this trio in particular, the, the bad news is this is the most challenging piece on the program. The good news is it's not that weird. Essentially, the first and third movements are, are a bit of jaunty jazz, and the, and the inner movement is sort of this surprisingly dark, you know, sort of inward-facing, meditative kind of, kind of movement that, you know, I think this is the first time for all three of us ever, ever performing this piece, so... To close out the concert, thank you all for giving us an opportunity to do it in front of such a wonderful audience. Thanks. Thank you. 
would like to, to say thank you for um, you know, being here. And this is our, um, our last concert. And it's an amazing honor to, to have these two amazing artists here you know, with us. So thank you so much. And I hope to see you again in October next, next year, um, next uh, season. <laughs> 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 <laughs>